before we look forward to the second half of the season, we have to follow up on one of the biggest storylines through the All-Star break, the future of Zion Williamson in New Orleans. So CJ McCollum said that he didn't immediately hear from the young superstar after he was traded from the Blazers, although he did tell me that eventually he did hear from Zion. But Coach Willie Green, he just spoke on the situation at Pelicans practice. Take a listen. You know, I won't, some, some things need to stay private, um, but I will say this. What Z is going through is extremely difficult. As a player, as a person, I've went through injuries. Um, no excuses made on my part, but it's difficult. And you win a lot at those moments. You win, are you going to continue to play? You win, like a lot goes through your head. And so for us here, we, you know, for me, it's having compassion and having an understanding of what he has to go through to, to get healthy. All right, so that was today at practice. Mm. We welcome in Kendrick Perkins, Chanae Agumake, and Brian Winhorst. So, Chanae, I want to start with you here. What do you make of the situation out in New Orleans right now? I agree. I think it starts with compassion, understanding that Zion Williamson came out into the league at the age of 17, 18, 19, where we all sort of fell in love with his game and what his potential could be. And it takes a while for you to find yourself, and it's even harder when you have injuries at an early stage of your career and have to figure out what to do to maintain yourself. So when Zion exited or removed himself from the situation, I was like, this is probably necessary. Ever since he was 14, 15, he's had cameras all up on him. And now he needs to be able to take some time for himself. And when I heard the conversation with CJ, McCollum, I didn't get like red flags or alarms. I just know Zion is trying to do what is best for him in this situation. And CJ obviously is going to do what's best for him too. Meaning, all right, I want to have communication with the star player of the franchise. I didn't think that this was, you know, something outlandish. Right. I'm just glad that Zion has reached out at this point, that they understand that compassion is going to take some time to get back to Zion, you know, in New Orleans, and that CJ has touched base. So to me, all of this, I can understand the challenges that that Zion has had, but I'm glad that communication has been met at this point. Yeah, checking in with CJ McCollum earlier this week, it certainly was clear to mm. me that he didn't see any ill intent on the side of Zion Williamson in not reaching out. It's just something that maybe he didn't think of or have to quite, it just didn't come to front of mind, Perk. Yeah, but here's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Why is Zion disconnected from the team anyway? Like, you're hurt. Why you're not in New Orleans where you have the professional staff for us, the medical staff, the training staff, all the above to get everything you need right there in the organization? And here's the problem that I have is that nothing that Willie Green said was wrong. He said everything was right. Like, Zion had the most pressure on him since LeBron James for us coming out of high school, college, or whatever the case may be. But y'all want to know the real? The real is is that I think it's time for the Pelicans to relocate. I think a city like Seattle, a city like Las Vegas, is more deserving of a, of a, of a team, yeah. of a basketball team, because I played in New Orleans, and they always are going to come second to the New Orleans Saints. I've been there. They always are going to be the little brother to the New Orleans Saints. Just think about it. Zion is a box office type guy. The Pelicans are still trying to give tickets away. Like, we watching, even when he's playing, we're watching the game, and it's empty seats. Like, it would never be a basketball city, and that's okay. But I think if the NBA want to move in the right direction, they really have to consider moving this team and this organization in order for them to even keep superstars and make this franchise relevant. I will say, Big Park, from my understanding, it was partly the team as well as Zion Williamson that came together and decided, okay, this is where he should be. He should be in Oregon. Brian Windhorst, I know that you're all over this situation down in New Orleans. What are you hearing kind of coming out of the team? Yeah, just to speak to what Perk said real quick, Gail Benson, the owner of the Saints and Pelicans, announced uh, earlier uh, this season she was going to donate the teams to the city of New Orleans uh, for them to essentially sell a right. uh, five to six to seven billion dollar gift when she passes away. So I don't think they're going anywhere. I think it's more likely they're getting a new arena in the next five to ten years. But as far as Zion goes, his family is obviously he and his family are obviously grappling with a choice on how to deal with his foot injury. We don't know what that choice is because the team and Zion have kept 
the, the information very tight. They're certainly uh, entitled to doing that. But if listen to what CJ said, listen to what JJ Reddick said. Um, I think it's clear that there are connections that are frayed or broken here. What we normally see between star players and their team, and star players and their training staff. And that's what I think is worrisome. But I also point out, you know, Joel Embiid played 31 games his right. first three years in the NBA because a series of injuries. The, the 76ers stuck with him, signed him to a big contract that protected both sides, and I think it worked out great for him. And I still think Zion has great potential and can get back and, and make all of this right. And I agree. And, Perk, you know when you mentioned, like, we got to keep it real, well, we all know, you know, when you enter the professional ranks, for me, the WNBA, for you, the NBA, it took us maybe five or so years to make those decisions. Mm. All right, I need a nutritionist. I need to have my own massage therapist. I might need my own osteopath or, you know, physical therapist. We made those decisions a couple years into our our careers. Zion was faced on the reality early on, and that's why this shift of him removing himself, I'm not surprised because it's probably the best thing for him. We, it's no knock on any team's training staff, but sometimes having your own team and also your own time to make these decisions to get you back on track right. is the best case scenario as yeah. a professional. Well, CJ McCollum is speaking to reporters in New Orleans as we speak, and he just told those reporters, leave the young fella alone. That echoes sort of what CJ McCollum had told me earlier. This is the first time that we are hearing from CJ McCollum. And you can see there, Zion Williamson on his Instagram story, he posted earlier, this is him and his teammates saying, my dogs for life 100. So. Take that for what you will, but CJ McCollum has said, all right, let's turn the page here. He's not taking it as any ill will or ill intent. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.